whatever the battles that Republicans are having, uh, they're arguing that voters are more interested in solutions than soap operas. Now, the media won't tell you that, of course, but Florida Senator Marco Rubio is, adding his considerable political heft to getting more Republicans to join him in the Senate. Today, barnstorming the Buckeye State with Ohio State Treasurer Josh Mandel, who many have compared with the rising young Florida star in his challenge to incumbent Senator Sherrod Brown. Both gentlemen joining me right now. Gentlemen, welcome. Good to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Senator Rubio, you could have your pick of a lot of candidates and causes to support. Right now, you put it uh, to the Ohio uh, treasurer who, who trails by a lot in, in uh, mock-ups with Sherrod Brown. That could change. But obviously, you didn't take the sure political route. Someone who was very close, um, you chose this one as your debut endorsement start. Why? Well, first of all, my race, I started out 30 to 40 points behind. So he's actually, if you compare him to me, he's actually in the lead, I guess, in terms of that. But it, just in terms of this profile, first of all, he's accomplished. I mean, this is someone with a wealth of life experience, even before getting uh, to this stage in his career. Uh, he's younger than I am, yet he served, I think, two tours overseas on behalf of our country and our military. He's come back here to the state where he served at the legislature now. Of course, he's the treasurer of the state. He's been very successful in that regard. And we need more people like that in the United States Senate. Clearly, Ohio's a critically important state in our country. But moving forward, uh, it's important that we change who's in charge in the United States Senate. We need a majority, in my opinion, a majority of Republicans so we can start to tackle some of these issues like saving Medicare and Social Security, like making sure that we, the United States, the most energy-rich country in the world, is fully utilizing all of our energy resources, not just to lower costs, but to grow our economy and to create jobs. And we're not going to do that with the current bunch that's in charge right now. We're going to need to make some changes, and I think he's a great start in that Regard. Treasurer, maybe owing to your entrance in this race, your critics have said that you have been sort of like an absentee treasurer, that you've missed almost every board of deposit meeting, a, a board that you chair, um, and that uh, you've been almost, as soon as you got in this post, you've been running for this new post. What do you say? Uh, we believe we're running one of the most efficient and effective state treasurer offices in America. Uh, while the U.S. credit rating was unfortunately downgraded for the first time in American history last year and 14 local government funds around the country were downgraded, we earned the highest rating we could earn, a AAA rating from Standard & Poor's on the $4 billion local government uh, investment fund I manage. Uh, Fitch then issued for us the highest rating they issue on our short-term general obligation bonds. Our liquidity portfolio is up $1.4 billion, and we've done all of that while cutting the budget in our office over a million dollars. Uh, the attitude and the approach we've taken in our office is that if families and small businesses throughout Ohio and America are going to tighten their belts, we're going to do the same thing in state government. And frankly, I believe we need more people like Marco Rubio uh, in Washington who have that same uh, approach to uh, the federal government. All right. So what you seem to be telling me is whether you miss meetings or not, Ohio's doing just fine. Is that the gist of it? Uh, we believe in the treasurer's office here. We're setting the example for the entire country. Uh, we're setting the example of how a fiscal office uh, should be run. Uh, in addition to that, we've put in place uh, one of the most uh, effective uh, and professional staffs that any treasurer's office has in this, in this country. Uh, we also uh, are instituting a heightened sense of discipline. I'm a Marine Corps veteran, did two tours in Iraq, and discipline and attention to detail is uh, very important to me, and we're instituting a higher level of both of those characteristics in our treasurer's office. Um, you know, the attention to detail might in fact be the case with Senator Rubio, and I'll certainly raise this with the treasurer. The rap against him is that maybe running for this office, and this is something that happens along the way, you try not to offer too many details. For example, on the recent contraception uh, debate, uh, the treasurer said that American citizens have the right to purchase birth control if they choose, but he also said, I think the Catholic Church has the right to follow its doctrines and its teachings. What do you think of that position, Senator Rubio? Well, that's exactly the argument most people are making, I thought, in Washington uh, on our side of the aisle. This is not about contraception. No one's talking about banning contraceptions. No one's talking about outlawing them. No one's even saying the Catholic Church can't choose to pay for it if the Catholic Church wants to pay for it. This is not even about contraception. This is about the Constitution of the United States, which as one of its fundamental tenets protects religious expression and religious liberties. The Catholic Church teaches its followers not to use contraception. Does that mean it has the right to prohibit its followers from using it? Of course not. 
But does that mean the federal government should have the power to force the Catholic Church to pay for something that the Catholic Church teaches against? Well, if the federal government has the power to do that, then there is no religious liberty protection uh, in the Constitution. And so that, that's what this issue is about at the end of the day. Today it just happens to be about contraception. Tomorrow it could be about something else. But the fundamental principles of religious liberty, which in many ways are at the core of the founding of this great republic, um, I think those are always relevant issues and they should always be protected. So Senator Rubio, when you hear the, 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 the response of the controversy generated by Rush Limbaugh's remarks on this very issue, justified that sponsors would want to vote from it? In America, you don't have to sponsor any radio program. Those people can make that decision. They could have made it before he made those comments. What I can't overlook, however, at the end of the day, this issue, forget about radio hosts, forget about stuff that people are saying on the air for a second. This fundamental issue at the end of the day is not about any of that. It is about the Constitution's protection of religious liberties. That's what this issue is about. Obviously, the left and the Democrats want to create distractions because they don't want to admit that what they're trying to do is use the power of the federal government to force a church to pay for something that the church teaches against and they don't want to admit that because when it's explained that way to people uh, people get pretty turned off by it but you were critical I guess of the language Mr. Limbaugh is you uh, you still critical well look what I said I'm not gonna have a comment every time somebody says something on the air I mean the bottom line is that you know he has apologized for it. people have dealt with it by pulling their ads and the Obama administration and the others are doing what they're doing those aren't words that I use but at the end of the day that's not what this issue is about and obviously I think most people would say they wouldn't use that terminology but that's not what the issue is about the issue here is about religious liberties and obviously that's been lost a little bit in the last couple of weeks we need to remember what's happened here and why it happened um treasurer you know uh, you've probably seen and you've experienced in Ohio firsthand these rising gas prices and now it is hitting the president his, his popularity all these other issues notwithstanding do you think that out of the blue that is the issue that could define this election maybe even your election not um, jobs 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 but it could come down to something simple as gas 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 well here in ohio those gas prices fall under the umbrella of jobs in the economy uh, since my opponent sherrod brown has taken office in the senate uh, gas prices in ohio and america have risen approximately 65 percent uh, this is one of the main areas of differential differ, differential between sherrod brown and me i believe in a responsible way that protects the air we breathe and the water we drink we should be exploring for natural resources here in the united states of america here in the utica shale and the marcella shale right here in the state of ohio uh, our opponent has sided with the federal government uh, blocking the exploration of natural resources here in the state of Ohio. Last week, he voted against the Keystone Pipeline, and this is going to become a defining issue in this campaign. It's one of those issues that are attracting a lot of Democrats to our campaign as well. Democrats, Republicans, and independents understand overwhelmingly that the natural resources we have underground in America are assets, not liabilities. And in a responsible way that maximizes these assets, we need to be exploring for all the oil and gas uh, we can. On top of that, Neil, I can tell you, uh, as a Marine Corps veteran who did a couple tours, uh, in Iraq. This is a national security issue. Uh, we should not be sourcing energy from places like Saudi Arabia and Iran. Iran that calls for the destruction of our country, the destruction of our way of life, when we have natural resources right here in the heartland in Ohio, in Florida, uh, and throughout the country. Treasurer, uh, you, you mentioned your service uh, and commendable at that to this country. Obviously, you're aware of the fallout from this Marine who, who shot and killed 16 Afghans over the weekend. And, and uh, President Karzai of Afghanistan has said this is unforgivable, um, and heightening the tensions between our two countries, and some arguing that Karzai himself has fanned the flames. What do you think of that? You know, Neil, my second tour in Iraq was uh, in a town called Haditha. Uh, you might recall earlier on in the Iraq war, uh, there was uh, something that was classified by politicians in the media as the quote-unquote Haditha massacre, where the media and some politicians in Washington publicly prosecuted these Marines, wrongly, I should say, because now most of those Marines have been found not to do anything wrong. They were doing their job as United States Marines. And so I think it's important. Let's not pass quick judgment. Uh, let's allow the United States military to conduct their investigation and make a decision. And if this uh, army Army Staff Sergeant did in fact do something egregiously wrong, then he should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Gotcha. But frankly, I'm sick and tired of the media and politicians in Washington publicly prosecuting our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. I believe the men and women carrying a weapon overseas, wearing the uniform of our country, should receive the benefit of the doubt. Um, still, uh, Senator Rubio, if I could wrap this up with you then, your thoughts on this. Yeah. Do you think that President Karzai has made the situation worse? by going so far as to call American reaction and behavior unforgivable. 
Well, look, again, and I, and I think Josh makes a good point about waiting until all the facts come in, but certainly what we've read in media accounts is very disturbing, and I have confidence in American military justice and the fact that these issues, and in fact they are as they're being reported, they're going to be dealt with. Look, Karzai has always been a difficult ally because the circumstances in Afghanistan has always been very difficult. That is a difficult engagement to be involved in. And uh, right. there are a lot of pitfalls along the way, not the least of which is, you know, can the Afghan people ever create a functional government for themselves so the United States' engagement can be lessened? We hope that that will be the case. And it's not going to be easy, and it's a real challenge, but there are real strategic interests there for the United States. We can't forget those either. And I think uh, what we need to remember now is that uh, there's a greater goal here in mind, and we hope to accomplish that and ultimately have Afghanistan have its own security forces, a functional All government, right. one that succeeds after Karzai's out of office in a couple of years. Gentlemen, thank you both very, very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,